And welcome to another edition of the Vic State Cricket Podcast. I'm Adam White. A bit of a different episode this week because, uh, well, it's a bit of a themed episode and I'll explain more uh, shortly. Our special guest, and it is very much a special guest, it's a very special guest, Belinda Clark will be our feature chat. We'll do that shortly, but uh, we're actually joined now by the head of female cricket here at Cricket Victoria, Sherelle McMahon. Sherelle, welcome. Thank you very much. It's nice to be with you. Yes. Now, we've got to talk to you about a number of things and I'll get to the main thing shortly, but obviously the Big Bash campaign, the WBBL has finished for the Renegades and the Stars a little bit earlier than we had hoped. But there were some good signs from both teams, particularly, I guess, from the Stars. How did you assess the the tournament? Yeah, I I think you've summed it up pretty quickly there quite well. Um, Obviously disappointing that the teams haven't continued through, particularly for the Renegades, I think, on the back of their performance last season. Um, You know, there's lots of reasons we could talk about um, in terms of personnel and injury and all sorts of things that have happened to to make that a little bit tough. But um, it's certainly given some different players some some opportunities in there and, um, you know, some some really good signs from the Stars. Um, um, Jonathan Batty coming over from England as their coach coming in there. And I think the Stars really do seem to have that core group of players and a lot of them are Victorian players, mm. which is exciting for Victorian cricket. Um, and, you know, we, we saw some r- great glimpses of some of our young players coming through. Annabelle Sutherland is one, obviously, in particular, Tess Flintoff before she was um, injured with that yeah. uh, quickest 50 ever. Yeah. It was amazing to watch. So, um yeah, look, it's um, obviously we would have loved at least one of the teams to be going through, but um, yeah, that that will be. We'll look at the in, entire system and and the way we approach that as we head into next year, which is exciting. I guess you knew how young you were going in. Mm. I mean, even the Victorian team is young. Yeah. Um, is that is that by design or is it just ha- happened that way that there is a real focus on the younger players? Well, I think um, it's kind of the way it's happened. Um, so it's it's certainly the way the, the group is shaped, particularly from a Victorian point of view, it is a young squad, particularly mm. when the Australian players kind yeah. of come out of, of that system. So um, it, it's a young group um, and... Uh, I think that there lies some real opportunity in that too and 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 while they are continuing to grow, having that balance of the experience in and around them, that, that's really important too. So um, kind of trying to get that right will be um, mm. will be the challenge going forward. I guess it's leadership development as much as skill based development. you know some of the some of the girls are pretty young and they're having to take on some pretty big responsibilities. Yeah, they are. And and as we know in cricket, the role of the captain is is massive. Mm. So, you know, that that is part of that learning and development and making sure we've got the right supports in and around um, those players who are taking on those roles. Just on Jonathan Batty, he was almost seen as the big recruit of all um, to come and, and help out from a coaching perspective. He seems anecdotally to have made a big impact in a short time. Yeah, he has been, he's obviously had success in the 100 yeah. and, and that, um, you know, those experiences can help in the way you shape a, a team, particularly in a tournament style um, like the WBBL is. And, you know, he's come in without knowing many of the players at all. So mm. uh, there's not a lot of time um, to get your feet under the desk or or in the nets or however you say that in cricket <laughs> terms. Um, but, uh, you know, there was some, some quick work that had to happen there. And, um, yeah, look, I think... Um, that's uh, an, an indication of uh, his ability to come in and, and quickly have an impact. But also I think, you know, that core group of players, as I said now, has been together for a few years and, and I think we're starting to see the benefit of that too. Take us uh, into what this week is all about. It's Women and Girls in Cricket Week. I know it's a Cricket Australia initiative. It's all part of the final series for the WBBL. But can you tell us a little bit about about it and also the impact on Victorian cricket? Yeah, so um, this week is is one that we're really excited about. It really is about celebrating uh, women and girls in cricket, um, and so and that is the players, the administrators, um, umpires, whatever role that you're holding in cricket, um, really celebrating that um, and bringing those stories to the front. And, and um, you know, I've been really pleasantly surprised with the response. Um, we've had a number of things happen happening in and around this week and probably one of the big ones for me was uh, when we had um, it kind of just sit outside the week uh, mm-hmm. but to, with the way the, the fixture structured up we had um, the doubleheader here at Junction yeah. Oval last weekend and um, we had a volunteers lunch where 
um, almost 150 volunteers from right across across Victoria came and and had a lunch with us and really it was a chance for Cricket Victoria to say thank you, um, which was amazing. And um, the other benefit from that was the connections that were made in that week. Uh, oh, sorry, in, in that um, in that function. And, and I'm hearing a lot from a lot of different areas that people and clubs and associations who are getting into more into the women and girls space want to connect with others who are doing it um, to, you know, share information, share stories and, you know, stronger together. So that was a really positive um, lunch and, and event that we held. And there's been a lot of really positive feedback about that. And Lots of other things happening too. I don't know if you want me to keep going into that wide or <laughs> Well, I just I think it's probably more than anything else is to talk about the health of women's cricket yep. because with the success of the WBBL, the, they're creating more and more role models, which means the kids are coming through at the other end wanting to be the next whoever. You can name so many different star players that now are sort of front and centre in the mind of young girls choosing what sport to play. Mm. Can you keep up with the demand? <laughs> Because there's infrastructure challenges as a result of that, whether it be women's cricket or girls' cricket, um, AFLW having similar sort of challenges. But with success becomes challenges as well. Yeah, good challenges. Um, my daughter is about to turn seven in a couple of days and we've got a giant um, Annabelle Sutherland head sitting in our lounge room <laughs> at the moment from her being here and, you know, watching her go absolutely bananas in that last over against the Renegades. Um, and so, you know, Athletes being visible is really important and that, that connection piece for the young girls as they're coming through is is crucial and that's why, you know, I love seeing that out. We've, I've just come back from Moi yesterday where, you know, a different community gets exposure to, to women playing sport at the elite level, which is which is incredible. Your question around can we keep up, I mean, it's a, it's a really valid one. Mm. Um, we're, we're just um, launching or have, have just launched a, a women and girls strategy that sits effectively right across the organisation. I've been working really closely with David White as the GM of Community Cricket, um, Liam Murphy as the GM of Premier Cricket and, and across our cricket performance area to make sure that uh, we're putting everything we can into each of those areas to ensure that um, women and girls have just as much opportunity to, to love and be involved in cricket as anyone else. Um, and that starts from, you know, really focusing on five to 12-year-old girls. We, mm. we really want to get them in and get them playing um, and then creating an environment where they're, they're feeling safe and welcome, they're having fun um, so that they'll continue to be involved in cricket and, um, you know, for those talented ones come through and um, mm. through to our area but for, for the vast majority to really just experience cricket in a fantastic way and love it. Um, so with those bigger numbers, as, as you mentioned, facilities are a challenge, getting access to grounds. Um, so part of that uh, strategy does look at, uh, you know, there'll be an audit around what things look like right across Victoria. We'll be working closely with local government to make sure that clubs and associations have those right connections to um you know, even like change rooms, for example. Mm. So we've got the right change rooms um, and, and that's a kind of a bigger vision thing um, and, you know, that maybe we need to develop some more grounds and space to make sure that the quality of ovals uh, are better a across a broader range so that um, we, we have better access. And, and I think for um, cricket clubs and associations, for us at Cricket Victoria, one of the challenges is potentially thinking outside the box of what we've done before around... Um, what format we might play, what days of the week we might play, how we can actually create space and time um, for hopefully these big numbers that are coming through because we're pretty ambitious yeah, but about what we want to yeah. do. And, and I find it fascinating because I'm living it in mm. community cricket now and seeing the challenges of having not just grounds available on weekends but time to be in the nets that it's not just the men that are going to be in the nets or it's yep. not just the juniors, it's the girls. Mm. You know, it's not it, – it's – it creates its own headaches, but they're good problems to have because more and more girls are wanting to play cricket. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you're right, there, there are challenges there. And it's, again, um, there's potentially a bit of a, a thinking shift that might mm. need to happen. And, um, you know, we're, we're really um, buoyed by how clubs and associations who have already come into this space are experiencing opening up to, yes. to a, in a different way. Because um, I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah, but it's, sorry, not, it's not a, oh, I said before, it's girls playing cricket. It's not just girls playing cricket. 
women are wanting to play yeah. cricket. So women are wanting to have teams. They're wanting to play on the weekend yeah. like the men are. So it's not just at the at the developmental level. It's across all age groups. Yeah, which is exciting. And, yeah. and, and you know, I think... The, those, those clubs and associations who have started to come in or have been doing it for a long time actually, a, a lot have, mm. um, are, are seeing a huge amount of benefit from that, that that real family feel uh, yes. ar- around a club, um, which um, is is exciting. I think mm. that those kind of opportunities are, are really great to have and, um, you know, it's it's different things. It's the big infrastructure things. It's thinking about the change rooms, but there's also small things you can do to make sure that everyone feels welcome actually yeah. um, within your club or within the environment that yeah. you're creating and, um, you know, who they see. Maybe it's who you're thinking about putting on committees and um, uh, boards and things. So so yeah. making sure that you're we, we uh, are all thinking a bit more broadly about yeah. who we can include and um, help us to think about different ways and, and things that might be important. Do you think your background in netball helps in this role? Because you've seen it the whole way through. Is it is it helpful because you've seen pathways that have just a, 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 almost a natural pathway the whole way through that you can now help implement into cricket or has it always been there and you're just putting the finishing touches on it? <laughs> uh, I, I think it's helpful. I, I think any experience you have coming into a, a different role is helpful and obviously I've come from um, a different background to cricket so it's been a bit of a steep learning curve over the last 12 months or so but a really enjoyable one and, um, you know, I think I was chatting to one of well, a couple of my old netball teammates around, you know, what what is it about netball that's obviously – uh, done well in this space mm. and created great environments for women and girls. And, you know, part of it is um, that women are, are the decision makers. They're, they're helping to to create the right environment. They're helping to make decisions on that. And so that's why I would, um, you know, encourage everyone to, to think about that if you're wanting to get into this space. Um, and, yeah, I, I think it's just making sure we acknowledge some of the differences. I don't think there's an enormous amount mm. of difference between um, the players as they're coming through. But, you know, girls do like to play with their mates. They, mm. that, that's really what drives them. So thinking about ways that you can help that to happen too, how we how we translate some of the really good numbers we're seeing in schools yeah. in, into club cricket and how we can connect through there. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing some really good numbers, really good numbers on the back of some a, a tough couple of years and, you know, um, even in the last couple of days the rain keeps tumbling oh, it's down. <laughs> it's been a, t- a really tough yeah. start and, you know, I think about um, right across Victoria. I'm from, as you know, Whitey, I'm, I'm from up um, north yes. in, in uh, up near Echuca and Rochester and, and, you know, some of those areas have been been really hard hit and, um, you know, so so to continue to to kind of work in in, in building this up and get the numbers that we're getting mm. now is really exciting, really really exciting. And in fact, one of the things that the volunteers were calling out that came into Junction Oval um, was that you know sometimes volunteering can be a tough slog, and so having a recognition like that kind of gave them a bit of buoyance and thought you know what we can keep mm. pushing on. It is amazing this thing with the weather. I mean, we think of the last two years with COVID and now we're late November and ground Mm. availability is difficult, not just because of the amount of teams that need to play, but so many grounds are still waterlogged and you can't play on them. And that's not even turf cricket. It's it's ridiculous. Mm. Uh, One final one, Belinda Clark is our special guest uh, after our special guest in Cheryl McMahon. Um, You said you've been in it just over 12 months now. Is it what you thought it would be? Because it's such a, it's a similar thing but a very different thing. It's still high performance. Yeah. It's still such a popular sport, netball and cricket, but but it is different. Oh, it's absolutely, it is very different. I mean, every sport is different mm. to each other, of course. Um, but um, certainly it's a unique sport. What, what is it what I expected? Um, I probably couldn't have written down the things I've had to do yeah. when I started um, just over 12 months ago, so it's probably not quite what I expected. But, um, you know, there's um, that, that was the excitement in, in a way uh, and the challenge that, mm. that was um, in and around this role, um, having no one just right um, directly previously to me stepping into this role. Um, that, and, it's, and it's such a great and exciting time and I think... 
um, working through this strategy and seeing how engaged Nick Cummins as a CEO um, is and, and how every department is engaged in, in making this really work is, is exciting for me. So I've, I've really loved that. You know, I've met some amazing people. Belinda Clark is, is one. She continues to work with our young players. You, you talk about that leadership role. She continues to work in that space with individuals and with mm. groups. Um, you know, more broadly than just in cricket because, you know, that's yeah. what she does offer but certainly with our young players coming through and, you know, that that's one of the things that I really want to capture too is um, we had uh, the pioneers in the room last mm. last week, um, you know, the and as the name would suggest, pioneers of, of women's cricket both here in Victoria and probably more broadly across Australia and um, there is so much passion, so much knowledge, so much want to drive and do things do things really well from those players who have been the custodians of this mm. game for forever um, and have done so much great work and to, to those players a bit more recently like Belinda Clark who are who are carrying that through now uh, to see what's happening with WBBL and um, you know where this game can head I, I just think there's there's a lot of real excitement there um, and that's a similarity. With, yeah. with my experience previously in, in netball, I think both sports have got such a rich history and so many incredible people and um, in, including them is is something that I want to continue to do probably better than I have now that I've got my feet under the desk and, and making sure that everyone feels like they're, they're really engaged in that because it's um, they are. Everyone's had a piece of the history of, of where cricket's been and, and where it will continue to go. Catherine Fitzpatrick, we, she was a guest a couple of weeks ago and she spoke about the pioneers and they're just so revered yeah. in women's cricket that it's a good starting point because they're so respected. Yeah, they are. They are. And yeah. they, they, they love They may have it. missed out on what's happening yes. now but they still feel responsible for where they are now at. Yeah, absolutely it makes sense. And, and that's one of the um, interesting things about players in, in all sports that have transitioned from amateur to mm. pr the professional world is, you know, that feeling of, oh, I would, how I would have loved to have <laughs> been a player now. I, I feel it a little bit too. Um, but there's, there's absolute truth in the fact that they were the ones um, the previously who, who did it without pay, who did it under really tough conditions in, in some um, instances were the ones that absolutely paved the way for what's happening now. And um, I love that. You can probably hear it in my voice. Yeah. I'm really, I am really passionate about that. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully the girls who are playing now, the players, the athletes who are, who are doing it at this level now really do appreciate that and the, uh, development and, and where it's come. Absolutely. It's all part of Women and Girls in Cricket Week. Um, you've encapsulated it very well. Well done. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Belinda Clark, she'll be next.